Hello and welcome everybody. I was already introduced and today I'm going to talk about the extended version of my bachelor's thesis, which had the topic, an alternative open AP backend for poly. First up, some shallow introduction to poly itself. Poly is a sub-project of uh, LLVM and it's a polyhedral fr framework working completely on the LLVM intermediate representation. Using the polyhedral model, it is able to efficiently model analysis and transformations and also allows to uh, generate new code. Some of the most prominent transformations of uh, poly are loop interchanging, the splitting of loops, merging of loops, and also strip mining, which is used to prepare for vectorization. But today's talk is mostly directed towards the automatic parallelization feature of poly. Now, when speaking, speaking about automatic parallelization, there is definitely no need for manual annotation of the source code. While poly operates on LLVM IR, I've brought some source code examples to clarify what poly th theoretically does. If we provide this uh, simplified matrix, mat matrix vector multiplication to poly, it will transform the uh, program as if the programmer had actually uh, had um, annotated the program in the first place with this OpenMP pragma. What poly does internally, it is able to detect uh, the parallelizable uh, code regions. It takes these code regions, outlines them into a known function, and then executes this function using the OpenMP API. So then OpenMP runtime is started, then the uh, threads are spawned. In this uh, example, there are four threads. Each of these threads will uh, execute the subfunction, which is also able to request more work shares, um, handle the thread lifetime end, and eventually, when all, thread, um, have, when all threads are terminated, the program will continue with its sequential ex execution. Now, this was working already six to seven years ago. Why should I bother implementing an alternative OpenMP backend? First, the influence of a user um, regarding the actual OpenMP execution is pretty limited, at least at compile time. Therefore, one of our goals was to increase the number of user options at compile time and therefore improve fine-tuning possibilities. Another point was that the pre-existing backend is completely dependent on GNU's OpenMP API. Therefore, providing an alternative backend would expand the scope of its application. For example, there may be projects which rely on other APIs other than the GNU OpenMP. And last but not least, LLVM has its own implementation of the OpenMP standard. So enabling the direct use of LLVM's OpenMP runtime would definitely support automatic testing. So what I did was what I would like to call an extension of the pre-existing backend. I tried to locate um, the re um, possibilities for reusing the common functionalities like handing over parameters and uh, creating sequential loops. Those functions were moved into an abstract base class. While the API-specific call creation, their placement, and uh, so on, is implemented each in a then derived class per backend. Therefore, it is pretty easy to select between the two backends in back here where the code generation take, takes place. This is uh, similar to um, providing the cell uh, command line switch of the number of threads to poly. Additionally, we uh, choose to implement another pair of options, namely the scheduling type and chunk size. The theoretical performance impact on scheduling type and chunk size is due to their behavior. While static um, scheduling provides the th uh, threads with a predetermined and uniform work distribution, dynamic sch scheduling forces the threads to request work shares of a certain chunk size, 
and after they've processed this chunk of work, they will try to request the next one until uh, the complete work is done. Now, Guided tries to strike, strike a balance between those uh, two scheduling types and starts off with a pretty large number of, uh, with a pretty large chunk size, which decreases over time and therefore hits uh, the dynamic uh, behavior. Therefore, these scheduling types have different benefits and drawbacks. For example, the static uh, scheduling has nearly no, has no load balancing, but introduces no uh, organization overhead. Therefore, static is suited for constant computational demands, while, for example, dynamic is suited for shifting computational demands since it is, since it is able to apply load balancing. Guided as a jack of all trades is certainly not the uh, um, general optimal solution, but is somewhat suited for both. While initially testing with uh, a single matrix, matrix multiplication, my supervisor brought Polybench to my attention, which um, provides a set of 30 benchmarks, each with uh, five uh, default data sets. And in this evaluation, we are looking at the large data set. Poly, uh, triggers the auto uh, Polybench triggers the auto polarization feature of Poly in 18 benchmarks. And of course, Poly is able to measure runtimes. In this evaluation, we, each runtime result consists of 50 out of 60 runs, which equates to a 10% trim mean and the, our utilized platform. Now the plots, which I am about to show to you, show the relative speed up. The speed up is computed simply by dividing the average runtime of the baseline by the average time of its competitor. Now first up, we are looking at the parameter chunk size and we have a baseline of chunk size one. We are utilizing all of the available threads and dynamic scheduling. While most of the threads show uh, no change in their uh, runtime, there are certainly these staircase pattern, patterns which show that with increasing um, chunk size, the performance decreases in these cases. But there are also two cases where the chunk size uh, we're increasing the chunk size has also a beneficial effect on the performance. One thing we can learn from this plot, plot is that there are also some sweet spots. In this case, uh, further increasing the chunk size will decrease performance again. Now, a scheduling type behaves somewhat similar to the chunk size. In this case, our baseline is the dynamic scheduling, and we have a change scale here. The first thing to note is that in the case of guided scheduling, there is generally uh, the same um, performance uh, as in the dynamic scheduling case. And when, then, when uh, guided is able to outperform dynamic significantly, static is even better but it is also more problem dependent, as we can see here. Therefore, I want to draw an interim conclusion. Usually, setting the chunk size to one is a reasonable choice, but it is also very beneficial in particular cases to increase the chunk size, as there are also more than three times speed up possible. Now, the scheduling types, I would like to say that um, dynamic provides a good overall performance, but guided, at least in this scenario, is able to outperform dynamic in most cases. Static is rather problem dependent, but when compared to dynamic, it offers up to eight times speed up. Now with this information at hand, we are able to select the best possible scheduling cases, uh, best scheduling types, to finally compare against the pre-existing GNU OpenMP backend. Now, we're using four threads in this, uh, in this uh, comparison and or vectorization. And 
At first, I was pretty deflated by this result. I have chosen to uh, compare against the best GNU OpenMP results to uh, since GNU OpenMP in this scenario uses the runtime scheduling, I've set the environmental variable to the respective values. So it's uh, dynamic, guided, and, and static scheduling against our best results. But when choosing the maximum number of threads, the landscape of the uh, plot shifts completely. As you can see, there are, all, um, uh, there are only three to four cases where we are clearly under the baseline and we are even able to achieve a 1.6 speed up when compared to the GNU OpenMP backend. Just for comparison, I want to switch back and forth to uh, show the extreme change in the plots, in this plot's landscape. So, when using the maximum number of available threads, I want to state that our LLVM OpenMP backend at, at least achieves comparable performance in the uh, general case. It performs significantly faster than the than GNU OpenMP backend in seven of the considered cases and even reaches up to 1.6 times speed up. The GNU backend, on the other hand, is only able to take a single lead, which was about 13%. Now, due to the additional switches, we are, um, we are enabling problems of specific adjustments at compile time without depending on the environmental variable, which enables us to, uh, to optimize uh, specific modules instead of relying um, that the user is setting the correct scheduling type in an environmental variable. Now, while I've tried to keep the uh, comparison between the two backends pretty fair, now to a very unfair comparison between our backend with enabled vectorization against Clang at optimization level three. As we can see, there are some, uh, some cases where there's still potential for poly, definitely, but on the other hand, there are also very extreme cases where the uh, improvements to cache locality, vectorized commands, and, for, and of course, the parallelization uh, provides us with very, very high speed ups. So if you haven't tried poly yet, I would su suggest you have a look at, at it. To conclude my, my talk, I would like to uh, state that our LLVM OpenMP backend for poly represents a superior alternative in this scenario to the GNU OpenMP backend. As it acts as a drop-in replacement, its coverage is completely the same as the pre-existing backend, and it provides more customization options at compile time. We, um, we stumbled upon no clear drawbacks in our evaluation and therefore, um, but we were able to reach up to eight, um, up to 1.6 times speed up. And last but not least, I'm happy to announce that our LLVM OpenMP backend is already publicly available. The review uh, was accepted about three weeks ago, and currently we are on Poly's master branch. So, my time of talking has come to an end, and you may ask questions. Hi, thank you very much for your talk. Um, one question, so the, the LibOMP also implements the, the GNU API, so the GOMP interface. Did you do comparison using uh, LibOMP using either the, the KMP interface or the, or the GOMP interface compared to using uh, uh, LibGOMP using uh, the GOMP interface? I used the KMPC interface using the LibOMP library. 
Does that answer your question? Uh, no, no that is, I'm wondering whether there's a performance difference between using the the, um, the LLVM I, uh, um, API using libomp and using the GOMP interface for libomp. Does that make a difference? Um, I did not evaluate this uh, special case, if I understand your question right. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks for the talk. So um, you mentioned that you had those switches to let the user select scheduling strategies in OpenMP. Mm -hmm. um, is there any heuristics in uh, Poly that selects a schedule, uh, schedule by itself? No, at the moment, uh, um, to the best of our knowledge, there is no heuristic at the moment. Because it seems like an evident follow-up, right? Because you have so much structure in your scopes that you could just uh, pick a scheduler strategy based on the structure of the problem. Um, so. In my bachelor thesis, I've um, thought about it. If there might, might be some uh, machine learning uh, approach to, or, or some, <laughs> okay, sorry, but um, to, to implement some approach to um, analyze um, the scopes and then decide if static or dynamic scheduling might be best but this is um, for uh, future work, I okay. think. Thanks. So in your comparison of the two backends, you have very different behavior for four threads versus 12. Yes. Do you have any explanation for that? No, at the, mo at the moment, I have no explanation. I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, I was, um, as I said, I was pretty um, surprised by these results, but um, I've, I've checked um, without SMT, or, also on an Intel platform, and it, it showed a, a similar behavior, but uh, I have no explanation at the moment. So, so is this something that you saw in the static distribution or only the dynamic one? Because if you manage your locking differently, maybe that... Uh, could, could, could you it, repeat, please? Is this an effect that you see in, the, in a static distribution or only in the dynamic uh, distribution that the, the scaling with threads behaves so differently? Do, do, you, do you remember that? I think it, it, it was, uh, was mixed uh, with uh, static guided and dynamic scheduling types. Um, okay. Okay. Well, well, thanks for the talk. Maybe we can talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tomorrow at the poster session, yeah. Uh, hi, did you try to explain why uh, the chunk size matters for some benchmarks but not for some others? Like, is it two you showed are they feature triangular domains? There are some others. Did you try to look into that? Uh, do I understand your co uh, question correctly? Why chunk size matters? Yeah, did, did you try to understand why it matters on some benchmarks but not on others? Yeah, um, Poly um, condenses some um, yeah, number of iterations and therefore um, the, even a chunk size of four may be uh, resulting in one thread gathering all the work and the other three threads are idle until uh, this one thread or will um, will come to an end. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Let's thank our speaker again. <laughs>